Hi everyone and uh, welcome back to the Western Centurion channel and three weeks later after my last update I know it's been a while and I'm really sorry yet again for the delay in it uh, but don't panic I haven't gone I'm still here I've just been extremely busy um, life has got in the way as usual um, the last two weeks I spent a week at work with audits um, having to get ready for our ISO 9001-2008 audit or recertification audit which was last week and got through that with flying colours. Well chuffed. Um, took a week's worth of preparation beforehand but we did it. Now all I've got to do is uh, get ready for the transition between ISO 9001-2008 up to ISO 9001-2008. 2015. Oh the joy! <laughs> God, can I wait? What a mind freeze that is. Not my favourite job audits, but um, it's part of my job, so I've got to do it. So I've got to make the most of it and enjoy it as much as I can, if you can enjoy doing internal audits. But um, anyway, yeah, that's, that's one of my excuses for it being um, a big delay since my last update. Um, my other excuse is, is the fact that limited time here in the garage to do actually do anything. Um, so I've had about or oh, maybe two, four hours a, a week really. That's that's all I've had, not much at all. Um, so I prefer to spend that time working in the garage than making update videos because if I did do a video. Um, there wouldn't be much to show anyway and believe it or not it actually takes a whole day to make a video because um, obviously you've got, I've got to do the, this little bit here which is a presentation um, and believe me it's not just one take I, in fact this is the fifth take at the moment for this video um, because I keep fluffing it halfway through and it's annoying and there's no way I can work out how to actually do another one or carry on afterwards and, and merge the two together seamlessly. I mean, I'm a little, a little bit perfectionist sometimes and, and I like to make sure it's right. Um, so, so, so yeah, it can take me a whole day because after I've done this, I've got to edit it. Um, make sure it's right, make sure everything's in the right place. I, cut the video at the right place, or start it, end it, add the music in the right place. Nothing seems so blinking easy. I thought technology was meant to help us. I actually started to find it confusing. God, I hope I'm not going the same way as my dad, but, but anyway, that's another reason. So I've been working in the garage, getting that done, instead of making update videos. I'm really sorry, but hopefully this video will make up for it, because I've got quite a bit show you and tell you about. Um, one of the things I've also done at the moment is I have downloaded Cyberlink Media Suite 13. Never used it before. Um, before doing this video I had a quick look at it and I thought oh my giddy arm that looks complicated. Um, I normally use Windows um, Windows Video Maker? No, Windows Movie Maker. That's what I, I generally use to make my videos. Um, I'm going to use that again to make this video, so at least I hope I can get this up by the end of tomorrow, or for you all to see tomorrow morning, those of you who aren't going to work tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'll have a play about with um, that bit of software there, Cyberlink. It's going to take me a while, I know, but uh, hopefully I can, I can do some different things. I want to try and keep the same format as videos I do at the moment. Um, uh, like the music, the, not music, the soundtrack I use, that is actually Western Champion D1015. And um, that soundtrack I actually downloaded from uh, a website called freesound.org. Great little website, lots of free. Um, sound files you can download of all sorts of different things. Um, I think all you've got to do basically is just sign up and then you can download the stuff. And it's, it's all free. 
And obviously if you've got your own soundtracks, you can load those up for other people to um, enjoy. Um, yeah, and if you want to see what uh, D1015 Western Champion looks like, I've got her ready. There she is. Western Champion. Isn't she beautiful? Um, at least she's uh, in preservation at the moment, so yeah, she can't. You can actually go and see her. She she is lovely. Um, right, what else? Besides, oh yeah, I've had a shave. Look, going back to the way I was before. Got a bit fed up with the uh, with the bushy look. Not to mention the maintenance on it was a lot more. You'd have thought actually growing a beard was less maintenance than not growing a beard. But believe me, don't be fooled. There is a lot of maintenance in it. Um, talk about male grooming. Had enough of that. I got bored of it. So I left most of it on the bathroom floor. So, yeah, this is all gone. Um, what else have we been doing in here? Right, yes. Last video. Where did we get to on that? I'd done... Um, oh, yes. I said about... The, the little work table I've done. Well, one of my subscribers left a comment and they were spot on about the ergonomics of that table. It was too low. Um, if I spent much time on it whilst I was doing weathering or any sort of modelling, I would probably end up with a bad back. So what I've done, I've raised that up now. Um, I've had to sacrifice a little bit of the headroom for the fiddle yard but I'm pretty certain it's going to be okay. Um, so the table is, is higher now and a lot more comfortable, but I'll be able to show you that in a minute. The other thing is, I've done all the um, cupboard doors. They're all done now and in place. But before I could do those, I had to get some hinges. And what a nightmare that is. Once you start looking into hinges, and more specifically, the cost of hinges is quite shocking. Um, I was, <laughs> I couldn't believe the price of them, let alone find the hinge that I actually wanted, because I had a specific or particular sort of uh, hinge in mind. And uh, what I wanted was this, a T-hinge. <clears throat> um, so this is a uh, four inch by 100 mil T-hinge. Brilliant, which is just what I needed. Uh, and I managed to find them on eBay. Perfect. Um, but as you can see, it's in its raw state. It's just bare metal, so I had to get some black matte spray paint. And this is what it looks like after it's sprayed. Perfect. Just the job for what I needed to do. Um, but yeah, so, a couple of these hinges, if you were to go to um, any of your hardware stores in your local town, or cost anyway, I don't know, we're about a pound upwards, I suppose, for a pair of these. So, how much would it have cost me, do you think, to have done this garage? with the hinges that I needed. Now bear in mind I need three hinges per door and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen doors. Actually, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen doors. So I have nineteen doors. I'll let you do the maths. 19 doors, 3 hinges per door. I expect you can pretty much get it just from that, that's going to cost a fortune. So, I had a look and as I said, I, on eBay, came up trumps. Really did. I was well chuffed. Because I managed to get this. Two hundred hinges. Or 100 pairs, shall we say, but, but individually that's 200 hinges. And they cost an extortionate £11. So, go figure. 200 hinges for £11. Hmm. 
plus 15 pounds postage and packing. So let's be honest, that's 26 pounds for 200 of these hinges. Can't go wrong, can you really? What a bargain. And I'm not going to use all 200 hinges, not at all. I can't think of anything I can actually use 200 for. Um, I sprayed up 60 so far, and that's more than enough. So the rest of the hinges, I will probably spray up and sell on eBay myself. I don't know, maybe 50p a pair, or 75p a pair, free postage and packing, of course. And uh, whatever I make out of those will go towards the railway. Absolutely fabulous. Um, if you're interested and you do think these hinges are just for you as well to play about with or for anything that you wish to do in your shed, your garage, your attic or even your house, um, then there's still some left on eBay. Okay? And they are here. Now that's the hinges. They're being sold by IPH Monkeys, all right? Or his eBay shop is called Hinge Monkeys. So that's the hinges, 11 pounds at 15 pounds postage and packing. But if you look down here, I don't think you can actually see it, exactly the same hinges, four inch by 100 mil T hinges. Now they are painted and they are going for one pound 49 a pair. Holy Moses, 75p a pair, I think is a bargain. Roll up, roll up. <laughs> so yeah, I'll probably paint the rest up and sell them on eBay and whatever I make will go towards our layout. Right, um, so that's the cupboard doors and hinges done, which I'll show you again in a minute. But there is something else which is really exciting, okay? mega exciting because yesterday I went to my local um, hobby shop or model railway shop actually so we say uh, spot on models in Swindon and um, I purchased the very first piece of track for the layout and here it is Pico Code 75 so yep yeah, it is fine scale this is preferred track that I'd like to go, uh, go with for the layout. But before I can actually commit to actually buying a shed load of track, I've got to make sure the majority of my locos work on it. So I brought this as a sampler at £3.75. Ouch. And um, I'll try some of the lo older locos on. Obviously, I know the new locos are be absolutely fine but the older locos I want to make sure they can uh, run on this without too many issues um, the gentleman in the shop was absolutely fantastic he really was he recommended that um, try it with some uh, code 75 points as well um, and he's more than happy to lend me a set of points to try so I'll probably go back next weekend have a chat with him again and uh, Get a set of points and another piece of track and some fish plates obviously to join it all together and I'll start doing some trials with the older locos, uh, particularly some of the ones I got from Phil's list if you remember. Like the um, those two rail cars. Let's see if they run over it. Okay. Um, and if they do, um, or at least if 75% of the locos run on this perfectly with the co 75 points then this is what we'll be going with for the whole layout including the fiddle yard um, not cheap I know uh, but I had a look at oh well I didn't have a look at I emailed Rails of Sheffield um, they won't reduce the price of what's on their website for this I think it was about £64 for uh, 25 yards but that still works out at £10 cheaper than E Hatton's. Um, so I'll either go with them or if uh, when I go back to Spot on Models, I'll ask them what their best prices they can do. Um, if they can match it, then yeah, I'll be more than, I'll, I'll be well chuffed. I'd prefer to buy from my local model shop than actually from the internet. But it all comes down to price at the end of the day, doesn't it? So yeah, 
our first bit of track for the layout. Excellent. Ah. Now then, um, I don't know about you lot, I'm pretty sure most of you are, but I'm a big fan of the royal family. I really am. I'm so proud to have them, to have a monarchy in this country. I really am. And, um, God, it must have been about a month, month and a half ago. I was just looking on YouTube early in the morning. That's about the only time I get to look at YouTube because I wake up at four in the morning and um, I get about an hour whilst I'm trying to wake up with a coffee and I'll watch YouTube. And that's really the only time I get to watch um, your videos as well. So it, you know, it isn't long at all. But I did watch a couple of videos which were for the Royal Train. Now I didn't, didn't even know there was a Royal Train. Um, a bit naive of me I suppose, but yeah, I was absolutely fabulous. Loved it. It was the Class 67 that was uh, pulling a Royal Train and, and still does to my knowledge. Um, so anyway, look, I want to show you a little video, okay, and see what you think on this. So here's the real royal chain, royal royal train class 67. Okay, 005, which is the Queen's messenger. Coach, that's a sleeper coach, dining coach. I think that's the juice. Saloon, that's the Queen's Saloon. I'm not sure which this is because they're both the same actually, a bit like the Duke's Saloon. But that's what they call a coachette. And there's one at either end. And that is a Diamond Jubilee, 67026, another class 67. What a lovely looking rig of coaches. And two lovely looking locos. Um, yeah, so, after seeing this, I thought, I wonder if Hornby actually make a, a, a royal train. And lo and behold, they do. I don't want me to think that they wouldn't have done it, but I think it was a while ago, wasn't it? Around about 2012? Or, or around about that period, anyway. So, um, often I start to realise I am actually a real collector maniac, because... I just wanted to try and see if I could get together the Royal Train. Um, so I started looking around and, and yes, there is stuff out there. And this is the first thing that I actually brought. Which is uh, Class 6706, the Royal Sovereign. Um, now this is one of the, the latter Hornby models of the Class 67. Um, this isn't the one that's actually featured on there, but um, you look at some of the other videos. So I've got a folder um, on my YouTube channel, which is uh, called The Royal Train. So by all means, it's, it is public, go and have a look, and these videos are on there. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've, I've managed to pick this up, which I thought was a, a really good price, considering some of the others that I saw. Um, and it's the start to my uh, attempt to get the Royal Train up together. Now, obviously some of the other things that we see on there is we've got the sleeper coach, which is this. Now, from what I can gather, it's not 100% accurate. Um, so, in the next few years, I'll have to uh, modify it to make it accurate to what's really on there. Now, there was someone actually selling on eBay the all five or five coaches that he had amended um, to replicate 
the real thing now but he wants about 350 pounds for them which was like no 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 it'll be more fun to try and do it myself which is what I'm going to attempt to do later on um, that's hard to come by by the way I don't know if I got it on here but um, there we go there's the speaker coach on this one I zoom it up yeah there's the sleeper coach um, I can't see the running numbers on here but one's going to be the Duke's saloon and the other one will be the Queen's saloon so that is this I'll take it out see and how much are they asking for this it's already at £62 and that's with five bits I got that for £13 and it's in its box the other is a dining car now again this isn't true to the real dining car or the royal dining car um, so this will need some modernising as well I think I've got to block out one of these windows altogether so that will be a project which I am actually really looking forward to doing at a later date um, now in here this is I've got the, the Queen's um, saloon and the Duke's saloon and again I've got a Queen's saloon and a Duke's saloon so that is two Queen's saloons and two Duke's saloons I have why have I got so many well one set I'm going to keep as it is the other set I need to change because the Queen's saloon has double doors and the Hornby ones you get only have a single door so I've got them to play around with and um, see how I get on with them now the other uh, two coaches on there let's see if I can bring this up oh you can't you can't see it very well won't let me zoom in that's a shame you have what they call a coachette now on the real royal train you have one of these at each end of the rake coaches so you'll have the uh, the power car and you have a coachette then you have all the other coaches then you have a coachette and the other power car now i managed to acquire one of these last night uh, two coaches on there let's see if i can bring this up when that happens when your pesky camera cuts out five minutes towards the end of your video oh oh well yeah that's what's happened my camera has cut out five minutes towards the end of the video and I've just done this just to try and finish it off so this is um uh, take six I suppose which I'm going to have to splice in at the end of the first bit that cut out which is this one here and in between the other video I took of the garage which that was pretty much a failure as well because I had to cut that really short 
because the battery is going flat. And, um, and oh, nightmare, because to be honest, if you can follow this, this is take two of the sixth take, because I did this, but then I think one of the batteries I use in the camera is what's causing the focus to go in and out. And the whole thing was the focus and it was just in, out, in, out. It's infuriating. But anyway, shut up me and um, get to where I wanted to get to because I thought I lost track. <coughs> but yes, just, just quickly, the short continuation from that is the fact that um, obviously the, the Queen's or the Royal Train has two locos. Now, neither of the ones we've seen in that video, I, I, I don't have neither of those locos. Um, the uh, 6705 Queen's Messenger, I'll be looking for that in the near future. Um, they're going around about 50 to 70 pounds on eBay, but I need to save up for that first. Um, the, oh, what was the other one? Yeah, the 6706 I do have, so that's all right. That's one I showed you earlier. But then we have the Royal Diamond, um, which is the use management train, 67029. Now I did manage to actually get that here in the train pack. And there she is, absolutely beautiful. And I love that logo on the side. Now in the, uh, the Royal Train folder that I've got on my YouTube channel, you can, you can one of those actually shows this, pulling the Royal Train, but I think that is also with 6705. Um, on the other end. Uh, obviously you get the addition of the two coaches to go with it. Got this for an exceptionally good price. Um, it, it came up and I think I must have found it within within a couple of hours actually being released on eBay. Um, and it was a buy now so I went for it and I got it. So when the layout's up and running I'll be running a Royal Train and it will also have this. Um, I love to have the Diamond Jubilee, uh, which was a limited edition made by Hornby, uh, but that's extremely expensive. So what I'll probably do is it's silver like this, um, but I think from here you've got like the Union Jack flag tapering down. There's a little symbol in the middle. I'm not sure what it is, um, but I will I will buy a, a Class 67 and as a project I'll spray it up. And see about getting the transfers. If I can't buy the transfers for it, I'll see if someone is able to make them for me. There's plenty of websites who do transfers, so that should be an interesting project in the in the future. Okay, so I said I'm gonna have to love you and leave you. I'm afraid because this is taking absolutely ages. It is now quarter past two. I've actually been down in the garage since six o'clock this morning, and <laughs> I need to get this. This last section of video on the computer, get the editing done and get it uploading. All right, then I've got to go and spend some time with Debbie because she's been up there all morning, early part of the afternoon alone, and I think I'm really, really pushing it. So anyway, all of you at work tomorrow, good luck. I hope it all goes well for you. All of you traveling, travel safe. And all of you who are not working, have a fabulous week. All right, I hope we get an update next week. If I don't, hopefully the week, uh, weekend after. Okay, so catch you all later and bye. Hi, de hi, and welcome back. Wow, there we are. This is what I've been up to. And you can see the cupboard doors with those fabulous hinges on, or shall we say fabulously cheap hinges on, which I think absolutely look great. And uh, this is where I sprayed them all up, all 30 pairs in one go. Did a good job, I think. So yeah, here we are, look. Closer look at the cupboard doors and hinges. Um, I think I need to uh, slightly readjust some of them <laughs> so they're actually the same height. Um, but I'll do that later. They do. Open and close and click into place. Oh, down here in this corner. Now, what's that corner?
cupboard going to be for? Hmm, let's have a think what would actually fit in there, shall we? Well, at the moment, I have my little toolbox. But that's not staying in there because I think that is the most perfect place for the beer fridge. Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, this garage will have a beer fridge. Or for the younger ones of us, a Coke fridge, or lemonade fridge, or any sort of pop fridge. But there'll also be room for the odd one or six cans of beer. Oh. No man's garage can't do without a beer fridge. Or fridge of anything to keep stuff in. Um, that's right, because I hadn't done all this before, had I? So I've now got another shelf in there to keep all the things on. These two doors aren't the best at the moment. I've got to redo those as well. I've got the, uh, I've been busy doing some stripping some um, cabling down to get the wires out. But the only problem is I've still got to drill the holes in here for the bus wires. I've done the, um, the joists underneath the fiddle yard base just got to do them in here and as I'll show you now I've actually done them here so yeah I've now got the bus wire running through uh, <coughs> complete underneath here so that's all in place I'll put some terminals on the end ready to connect up at a later date Oh, here we are, look. That's the temperature in here, 18.2, and it's 12.6 outside. Beautifully warm in here. Good old insulation. Um, oh yeah, I, I had the keyboard down here, didn't I? Just there. I've taken that out, because that was too low as well, and um, it just wasn't gonna work. So I've now decided that in this area, that's where I'll keep all my modeling stuff and under here that's where all the computer stuff will be kept plus some modeling stuff which i don't use so often and the uh, stalls will sit under there quite nicely and that's the table as you'll see it's uh, a lot better than it was because you think at one time last time it was this height so yeah that's that's a good a good foot taller now I think yeah yeah about about a foot taller and it's a lot more comfortable to sit sit at and um, and to do some work so yeah thank you very much for that tip or advice um, about the ergonomics you were so right um, I'm thinking that I'm going to have to put some form of um, power sockets on here. Probably just be an extension lead with, with two or three uh, sockets on so that I can have a, um, a magnifying lamp attached to the side here that will plug into it and obviously the soldering iron because that's not going to reach right underneath. So I'll get that done in the next few weeks as well. Um, oh, I tried to sell the, that window on eBay. £45 I tried to sell it for, no one wanted it. God, what a disappointment. Um, so I'll put it back up on there, I think, at 99p and uh, see if I get anyone, anyone wants to buy it. Um, my two old lawn mowers, they've gone, my push lawn lawn mowers, that really hurt. But I managed to sell those, um, two very happy customers as well, so that, that was good. Um, particularly my old, the old, old one, which I think was 1940s lawn mower. Uh, that went to uh, someone who was over the moon to have it, who's actually a collector as well. So he's going to um, redo it and send me the photographs. So when that happens, I'll let, let you see as well. Okay, I've got to go. Uh, battery's just about to run out, so see you again soon. Au revoir, bye.